For one of my products, I'm starting a new open source project, which is called the package proxy. It meant to serve as a generic package reg registry. But today I wanted to introduce the process that I'm using to create a brand new Golang project and how I'm doing an actual setup. At first, I'm doing go mode in it with the GitHub project handle that I'm going to use later on to import that as a package that cl creates go mode file that contains an actual package definition and an, a go version that I'm using for handling that project. Next step is of course selecting a github repository with all of the git ignore files and choosing an actual go implementation of that so this is an official repository from github itself they recommend having the git ignore files for each programming language or framework they have quite a big list so you'll find pretty much everything there i'm just copying that over and I have to do some minor changes because it's not really a generic use case. It's a basis that later on you have to change, of course, depending on specific use case you have. For myself, I'm going to add the uncommon the vendor folder, which is the place where all of the Go packages will live. And I don't want to commit that to GitHub. Next up, I'm adding the project folders for IDE. I'm using Goland for writing a code code, but sometimes my other teammates will use VS code. So, so I want to make sure that those files are going to be ignored from developer to developer without focusing on an actual local configuration for the editor. For having the main function executable, and an actual entry point for the entire project of Go application, I'm going to create the folder called command. And that folder actually contains all the executable files not related to an actual extendable packages that's going to be running an actual Go application. And to get started, I'm actually trying to test at first how the debugger works, if the environment configured correctly or not. And in this case, it works. It just kind of moving on with the print hello world that you will see in your debugger. I'm sure the same concept applies also for VS Code. VS Code also has really good support for Go programming language. Next up is making a directory for models that will contain an actual database or data communication and the logic depending on the data itself and that models will hold an actual structure of the data that the application is going to use this means for example if we have a database connection or if we have just a generic definition on how model schemas will look like, everything is going to be held in that folder itself. And because we have a generic gene server application, I'm usually using gene because it provides really good API of writing a server side code without actually focusing that much of writing a Go native code, which Sometimes might look really ugly, but that's just a personal opinion. I know, I know from the community that there is too many people hate Gene and tend to write a plain Go HTTP server code. But I really like Gene and the concept of middlewares that really helps of defining a specific of workflows that you need inside your code base. So in our example, here we have a simple gene server that runs on 8080 port that later on we are going to expose as a configuration environment variable to give to this server and to get packages held up and make sure that we have that in our go mode file, we are going to run the go mode tidy command and go mode vendor. So we starting up a server and making sure that everything works. 
and to test an actual API endpoint to make sure that we get the proper response back. I'm using a file extension called HTTP, which is available by default in WebStorm or Goland and of course in VS Code as well throughout extension that makes the life our life easier to just define a specific endpoint and send HTTP request and get back a response directly in our editor or code IDE rather than using external tools. And in this case, we get back a proper response pong back uh, when we send a simple get request to our ping endpoint. Probably the most important folder in all of this project star structure is folder called services, where I'm usually holding all of the business logic, all of the route handlers that make the business logic processing happen and an actual data work happens inside these services. So in nutshell, these services contain an actual logic that this API endpoints are going to execute. And for this specific example, I'm going to make the health check endpoint that will send back a status OK in this case, because we don't have any database connections yet. So we don't need to check anything. If we get back a response, then the service works fine with a status 200. And of course, after defining our service handler, we have to import that in our main file and define that as a relative path of the home page because usually the health check services like kubernetes health check or aws load balancing health checks everyone like pointing out to the root url of given service just to make sure that they get back a 200 status code to make sure that service is operational and mark that health check as green and respond with the proper resolution of the service. The important part is that to define a configuration files properly, I'm usually using the environment variable configuration and that really helps me to keep track of specific configurations and it's easier compared to file based configurations to configure inside a Kubernetes or even give that to AWS configurations and that usually more readable and you can share just environment variable configuration across different virtual machines by just having a global configuration in Kubernetes, which I am using for deploying the production based applications. That's why having the environment variable configurations in this case makes more sense to just define the specific structure of the configuration that we want to have. In this case, we are just going to use the listen address and database URL as an example that we can have many items in this structure and everything will come through environment variable using the function called get env. The idea there is that whenever we receive a key that we want to fetch from environment variable, if we don't have a default value given as the second parameter, then service will fail saying that a hey, this value is not defined. Otherwise, it will just pick from environment variable or from default value if it is given as a second argument. So that custom function really saves a lot of space in writing code with if else conditions. That's why I always use that. Another important thing is that we have to add auto loader for environment variables, which we have a very good library called go.env. It makes an autoloader of .env file that we have in our current root directory. And of course, to keep that library in our go mode file and make it locally runnable, we have to make again go mode tidy and go mode vendor commands just to keep those files locally in our vendor directory and also having those in dependencies in our go mode file. 
Now that we have defined our M file auto loader and an actual configuration, we can define now our environment variables inside .n file, which is going to be consumed by our configuration module and it is going to be running an actual config.get.listen address for our service gene server address. This is how in general I start a Golang service project. The structure is pretty much simple and that might change over time depending on requirements like moving out routes from main file to separate depending on how many routes this kind of services will get but usually having a golang service means that we won't have that much routes instead it is for making very small microservices that operate very atomic way so that's why usually main function itself contains an actual routing but that depends on project type next up is going to be adding actual models and database connections and rest of the logic that i'm gonna document over time let me know in comments if you want to see the entire project documentation and an actual implementation of the logic for hosting a package registry.